for a long time I have felt that Israel has not gotten its side of the story out when it comes to future of peace negotiations. In fact, there's this gross asymmetry between the way people understand the claims and requirements of the Palestinian side and the requirements of Israel. I used to say when I would lecture many times in the English-speaking world, you know, if you wake up Sai Barakat at 1 in the morning, I won't say 3 in the morning because that has other connotations in, in American politics, but at 1 in the morning, and you ask Saib, tell me, what are the goals of the peace process? They'll say, Palestinian state with Jerusalem as its capital. And you wake up most Israeli negotiators at 1 in the morning and ask the same identical question. And the answer you're probably going to get is, um, and then you might get as an answer, peace or peace with security, which are all worthy goals. But you characterize for me the difference between somebody who says the goal is a Palestinian state with Jerusalem as its capital and somebody else who says the goal is peace or peace with security. The difference is the first guy has a defined goal and the second has an abstract goal. Now, I don't care whether you're practicing law, business, academia, whatever your uh, field is, anybody who has a defined goal in a negotiation wins. Number one, Israel cannot withdraw to the 1967 lines, which are more properly called the 1949 armistice lines. People who say 1967 border are simply using an incorrect term. These are armistice lines. These are military lines where the army stopped in 1948 and where there were some quick little exchanges between the Jordanians and Israel and that's in, in the last year of the war. So number one, Israel cannot return to the 49 armistice lines. Number two, Israel will need defensible borders. We don't have a map here. We don't tell you where the lines will be drawn for defensible borders. That will be in negotiations. But Israel has a concept of defensible borders. It's had one since the time of Yitzhak Rabin and Yigal Alon, and that's amplified in the book. And the requirement of defensible borders also includes something that 99% of observers of the Middle East do not know, that Israel cannot concede control over a unified airspace over the West Bank, that it is impossible to provide for the air defense of Israel if Israel simply says, we're out of the airspace. It's now Palestinian airspace. The man who writes about this in this book, his name is General Udi Dekel. Udi Dekel was chief negotiator for Tzipi Livni under the previous Olmert government. He's a brigadier general in the Israeli Air Force, was, he's now in reserves. And the third point, which runs through the whole book that I want all of you to be aware of, is that we consider the option of putting international forces in the West Bank instead of Israel. We look at UN forces, we look at NATO forces, since that idea has been surfacing here and there. And there is a clear conclusion running through all the chapters that only Israel can defend itself by itself. And Israel should not rely on international forces instead of its own military presence. In fact, there's a very incisive uh, issue which is uh, considered here about NATO that most people don't know that NATO puts all kinds of stipulations on the deployments of its national forces in places like Afghanistan so that German forces in Afghanistan will not go into certain combat areas or won't fight at night or won't be near poppy fields. And these stipulations that limit NATO's use in Afghanistan could be relevant in a peacekeeping mission here too and that's one of the reasons we also question the whole idea of putting NATO forces uh, in the West Bank. <coughs>